All right, here we go. If you're watching this, you must be finished with your rough draft and you're all ready to take a final look at your paper. We're going to look at a whole bunch of different documents and maybe a couple fun things as well. First, you should have this paper. It's the argument writing prompt and it contains a lot of good information similar to what you might see on the PSSA, but also just some really good information to make sure that you have everything that you need. Now, if you hadn't looked at it yet, this will help you to think about your project and to just make sure that you are on the right track as far as what your body paragraph should contain. Your first body paragraph should indeed be about George Washington and then Thomas Jefferson and then Andrew Jackson. Your social studies teacher has requested that you do uh, can't handle the paper in that order, so do make sure that you're doing that. You should also have two facts, details, or proofs that you have researched on approved sources um, in each of your body paragraphs. So that should be properly cited and we'll get to a little bit more about that in a while. All right, we're going to switch documents here. What could that be? My goodness, the penguins are wishing you a happy Valentine's Day. Do you see any of your favorites in there? I kind of like the Simone says, although we're supposed to call him Simon this year. And finally, oops, it won't move down. Hang on. There you go. There are your last ones. Okay, let's move on to a real document. And you should have a draft of your paper out and ready. You'll notice that in your essay outline, which should have really helped you to stay focused on your paper, there was a lot of important information. So this might be a good time to just review it. Here we say, avoid the following, cute or informal slang or language, the overuse of questions, contractions, or repetitive sentences. This means that Mr. Thompson and I should not see anything like, that is why Andrew Jackson was bad president, or now I am going to tell you about this, or I hope you've learned a lot from my essay. Uh, we're going to take a little different philosophy here, and we're going to go with a much more scholarly tone. Again, you'll see your prompt there. Note that you need to use at least three sources. You were told on Friday how many of those sources you needed to find on your own. That kind of varied for people, but essentially you are choosing at least three sources, and hopefully you did have some success in finding your own sources. Don't forget that you could use EasyBeb too to work on that work cited. Now, in your, you've already looked and spent so much time on the outline that I don't want to spend any more time on that, except to say that here in our conclusion paragraph we're using the inverted funnel format and this is the so what tell us about the significance of your discussion so why does it matter you should not be ending your paper by talking about any of the three presidents instead you're ending your paper by kind of branching back out and getting broad again so again even looking here what observations can you now make what does it matter how does this help future presidents and citizens okay we're going to switch a document again this is another document that you have access to. It is um, on tips and plans, I think it's called, for composing an essay, and it is on blended schools. Now, you have already been through most of this, but I just wanted to point out our sentences, our standards for good writing. We're using strong sentences, appropriate transitions, and solid concluding sentences, formal academic language. We're going to avoid words like I, me, you, we, and us, although we and us can be used occasionally, but try not to overdo it. We're also going to get rid of words such as thing. I saw that a lot in looking at the outlines. Get and got, say and said, and might I suggest getting rid of the word bad or cliches like he did the right thing. They just don't sound very educated and formal in this kind of paper. Okay, and make sure that you're in as far as your capitalization goes, you are capitalizing Whiskey Rebellion, Trail of Tears. I can't remember. Oh, Louisiana Purchase, of course. Okay, and we'll talk more about the work cited later, but again, you have this document here. You can also look on your 21T um, website uh, on your blended schools, and you're going to make sure that everything is set up correctly this time. Okay, your work site will be on a separate sheet of paper, 
Your sources will be in alphabetic orders. They'll be reverse indented. Do the best you can on the spacing, uh, although everything should be double spaced. And that should make things pretty clear for you there. This is the MLA heading. It's double spaced. This is the MLA header. Again, you're working on different mediums here. Just do your best if you can get it on there. Great. If not, we'll try it again the next time. Uh, here were some suggestions for your it, tell me, your show me, and your so what. So, of course, if you need to go back to these documents, please hit the pause button and do that. Okay, we had our Valentines. Now it's time for a little more love. You have worked so hard on this paper, and I really want to thank you for putting everything that you've had into it. I know they're going to be great papers, and you're going to be great writers to move on to eighth grade. Okay, let's move on. Just a couple more things to go over. I made it kind of a dummy document here for you, just to refresh with you what the MLA heading stands for in the header. I have no idea why I could not get the number one on the top right hand corner of this page to be the correct size, which would be 12, but when you look at it, maybe you can pretend with me. You're just putting your last name up there. It will be right justified. Again, try to do the best you can with the header. You can hit document elements if you're on a Word document. Um, sometimes you can go up to the top and go to format and it'll say header or it'll say page number and you pick the one where it automatically gives you the page number on the right hand side. That's called pagination. Okay, so back over on the left hand side you have your four line MLA format, which you can see there. They do the date in the European style, very fancy. And you can see that I've made up a title. I have not bolded it. It is not giant. It is not underlined. It is not in quotation marks. It is in, you guessed it, MLA format. So let's go ahead and look at my little dummy paper here. It has some helpful hints in it for you. And I didn't stay up this late for nothing, so pay attention. In this final introductory paragraph, you will start with a broad or general statement, a relevant quotation that is then connected to the text, or even a short story called an anecdote. We talked a little bit in class about how uh, when the president during World War II decided to drop a bomb on Hiroshima, Japan, that was certainly a pretty big and controversial decision. A lot of people wondered, and they still wonder, did those um, end means just, oh, am I saying it wrong? Um, do the ends justify the means? That's correct. Okay, and that was my little example there. You can use a, you can find a quotation on a lot of the quotation sites. Maybe it'll have to do with just decision making in general or with power, or you can look up presidential quotes, you can look up George Washington quotes, or Andrew Jackson quotes, or Thomas Jefferson quotes. Just try to pick a quote that will apply to your entire paper rather than just one body paragraph. Okay, back to the paragraph. The idea is you start broad and work your way down to narrow the ideas to your thesis or claim. This is why it's called a funnel paragraph. That means you should not mention our three presidents in the first sentence. I saw that a lot today, so we want to try to avoid that. Now when you end the paragraph, you're going to end it with your one sentence thesis, or since this is an argument paper, we're calling it a claim. So in your claim, state your position or stance, or claim, and mention what you will prove or argue in the ensuing paragraphs. I'm not totally satisfied with my example, but here it is. Although George Washington's actions in the Whiskey Rebellion and Thomas Jefferson's Louisiana Purchase positively impacted the nation, Andrew Jackson's decision leading to the Trail of Tears led to negative consequences for the United States. You might notice that I spelled lead as L-E-D. That is the correct past tense of to lead, by the way. That's a very common spelling error on these papers. Okay, so you can tell from my sample thesis statement exactly where this paper's going, exactly what order you would expect to see the topics, and exactly what my position is. So it does fit all the qualities of a good and effective thesis statement. Now moving on for our body paragraphs, we want to make sure that this first sentence of our body paragraph and our future topic sentences state the position, claim, or stance that you're going to take in the paragraph and then prove it. 
You're arguing your stance or your claim using lots of specific evidence, um, you know, not some, just some evidence that people walking past Mr. Thompson's class on a, any particular Wednesday would have heard, but actual evidence that you have found, researched, and then cited. Showing just superficial or shallow knowledge is just not going to make it here. So do be sure that you're really putting your effort in and trying to delve a little bit deeper. Now you've been asked to use at least two cited pieces of evidence in each body paragraph. Each of those pieces will contain parenthetical citation. Everything that you have in the parentheses, you're not going to put the entire work cited piece in the parentheses. You're just putting the first word, couple words of what you see on the work cited page. So for Katowski, Peter, and I don't remember what that was on the work cited, but it, you would have the whole entry on the work cited. In the parentheses in your in-text citation, you just have the person's last name, Katowski, and that's it. Uh, you are also going to make sure you end each body paragraph with a concluding sentence that shows if the ends justified the means. In other words, here's our big question, was it worth it? This is indeed your opinion, and hopefully you have used your citable evidence to prove your claim. Okay, and you'll notice once you automatically use a header on the first page, it should put it on every single page uh, after that. Finally, in your conclusion paragraph, you're using a reverse funnel. This means you restate your thesis, and I saw a lot of people just copying the thesis onto this block on the outlines. Please try to use different words. And then it's often really helpful and it bulks up your um, uh, conclusion paragraph to summarize your body paragraphs. You can combine your thoughts if you want to, or if you just think about each body paragraph and write one sentence or part of a sentence that summarizes it, I think you'll be able to really round out your conclusion sentence in a little better way. So you're ending with your so what. This is so important. Your final paper should not end talking about any of our three presidents. You end it by talking about why it's important. You know, if you talked about decision, the importance of decision making in your introduction, let's go back to that. You know, we're talking about why our first presidents you know, made decisions and whether or not those were good decisions. And if you haven't figured out, figured it out, we make decisions every day. And this is something that we're going to continue to do for the rest of our lives. And we have to think about, you know, do those decisions, uh, do the benefits outweigh the consequences? Do we really think about the consequences of those decisions before we make them? Do the ends justify their means? Are the decisions that we make beneficial for us in the long run. Okay, after all those deep thoughts, I just had to put something goofy on here. My cousin's wife posted this on Facebook and man is it ever cute. Okay, last document. So I guess what we want to do, oopsie, is take a look at, oops, hold on. Thanks for your patience. Alrighty, so this is an editing checklist. You will turn it in with your final paper. And it includes a series of points on the right-hand side that you can use to gauge whether or not you're getting it all. So our formatting, we've been over before. If you're still not sure, ask someone or look at Mrs. Kusick's 21T website. It really has all these wonderful videos and resources for how to do all of this stuff if you're not sure. Our introduction, we've talked about this a gazillion times, but you will be evaluated on it as well. Please try to make sure your thesis statement is not only a statement, that means it does not end with a question mark, but that it's also one sentence. So you might have to work on that, but I think you can do it. Body paragraph one, two, and three here are all the same. Again, this is Washington, and then Jefferson, and then Jackson. You should have a great topic sentence that illustrates your stance. Nice, logic, sub logical, substantial, relevant information with at least two correctly formatted MLA in-text citations per body, per body paragraph. 
what you have in the par in the parentheses at the end of that sentence with your fact in it should match up with the first few words of your Works Cited page. Don't forget that on your Works Cited page you will have all of your sources that you used listed in alphabetical order and uh, some of them will start with an author, some of them will start with the title of an article, that's okay. Your concluding statement will Re, will kind of relate back to the thesis and answer the question, you know, was it worth it? Did the um, ends justify the means? And those are all the same, so I'm just going to continue to go past those. Your conclusion, is it adequately restated? Please use different words, vary your diction, and have you summarized the argument from your body paragraphs? and also have you included a so what again don't end the paper talking about the presidents and the paper talking about something a little broader than that and finally your work cited page so is it following MLA format did you in your paper use correct capitalization punctuation and spelling did you use formal academic style and this is a really important one please read this one carefully and did you avoid using run-ons, comma splices, and fragments, which is something we just had a nice big unit on. And so uh, with that, we're going to take one more peek down here as far as how to write your paragraphs or your parenthetical citation. Um, you can look at these examples here. Okay, our turn-in dates and procedure. If you're ready, and you, you've really done everything you can do with this paper and you've been kind of ahead, you might want to submit it uh, by the end of the day on Thursday so that we can get a good start head start in these papers over the weekend. Uh, but you may also turn in your paper at the beginning of LA class on Tuesday, February 17th. I would ask that you please not come into class and say, oh, I have to go print my paper because we will have other plans on Tuesday, February 17th that do not include being your office max. Thanks. So you're turning in a printed copy of your paper, this your rubric that's from that first packet that I showed you, this checklist uh, filled out. You know you can I want you to grade yourself or have a peer grade you. I might grade you also on this sheet just for just for fun, and optional your outline. If you want to give me your outline so I can try to follow things better, that would be super. Oops, I said we were done. I just wanted to point out that we have this other rating rubric that we need to use to grade your paper and I'll be using that along with the checklist that you just completed and you can see that you have this this is the rubric that you were supposed to turn in with the hard copy of your paper you can rip it off from the front page and just include it with your paper so again we're looking each category is worth eight points and hopefully I will be circling a lot on that left hand side argument claim organization content and evidence style and of course convention so leave lots of time for proofreading oh, this is getting long even for me all right here's the work cited page that mr thompson made for you from the last one since we had so many problems with it last time i thought i'd better show it to you one more time so notice that work cited at the top is just normal it's plain. It's not in quotes. It's not bolded. It's not underlined. It's not, you know, the size of King Kong or anything like that. You'll notice that the entries are in alphabetical order. If I had um, something from Fleming in my paper and I wanted to use the in-text parenthetical citation, I would just put my sentence, my quote, my fact, my figure, whatever it is, and before I put that period in my paper, I would just put parentheses, Fleming, parentheses, and be done. You'll notice that Franklin Benjamin doesn't have an, an, art, an author to it. It's from a reference book. Neither does Frederick von Steuben. If you recall, all we did on these is in the parentheses, we put in quotes, ben Franklin, comma, Benjamin, quotes, quotes, parentheses, and then your period. And so if you have um, Indian removal, and that's the title of the article and there was no author, then you just put Indian removal in your parentheses. Now, I promise to forgive you if you forget the quotation marks, but do try to put them in there the same way that you did on these other articles. 
Uh, the only problem you'll run into is if, for example, you have two articles that are called the Whiskey Rebellion and in your paper you have to distinguish them one from another. Just keep going uh, and you'll see that, that um, keep going on the work cited and then in parentheses just keep putting more of the title until whoever looks at the parentheses is going to look at your work cited and know, oh, hey, it's that article. Okay, that's really all about I have to say for that. Make sure you did not use any any notes from uh, your social studies teachers. You weren't allowed to do that this time. Yeah, I don't even know what to say about this, but I saw it. I thought you'd enjoy it. Maybe it'll snow a little bit this weekend and you can build something. If you do, be safe and send me a picture of it. Maybe I'll put it in my next screencast. Good night, everybody.